journey from tragedy to power and peace of mind. I'd like to ask, and it, it's, a, it's a generous request, if you want, raise your hand if you've lost someone you love.
she had a new heart, right? Great. And she was two steps away from dialysis. Anything. So the neurologist, the kidney doctor, he says to her, that's great that you have a second chance, Ms. Madriga. You have a choice to make. You can choose to live the way you've been living, or you can choose to transform your health. Well, she looked at me, I looked at her, we looked at the doctor, and her mom gave the doctor a hug. I still remember his name, Dr. Cesar Martinez. We knew what it meant to transform our health. You know what that meant? That meant making healthy happen. Okay, so I shared with my mom inspired, right? I shared with her, Mommy, I will go in solidarity with you. I will take on transforming our health. Right? Because guess what? You're not alone. So we looked at the doctor, right? <laughs> He's the one who's going to help us out. So I get asked, what does transforming your health look like, right? How do you make, how do you make healthy happen? So we took nutrition classes at the hospital, did plenty of research, we started doing our veggie shakes every morning. And, you know, you could ask her. She would pinch her nose. And I'd say, Mommy, you know what? It doesn't even smell. It doesn't smell. She's like, well, it looks yucky, you know? <laughs> but she took it. She drank it. And I did, too. And we took supplements, and I, we checked her sugar, and we checked our blood pressure, and... Boy, you know, we're stressing less. We're doing Zumba. We're doing some belly dancing, getting hydrated. We were in the zone, right? Like, wow, if, you, if, if, if diabetes had, like, an A+, plus, we were, like, A++ plus plus as far as managing uh, the diabetes, right? So I said, Mommy, you know what? Let's take it up a, a notch, and let's just you know, just kind of get rid of some more carbs. Mind you, we had already let go of breads, cereals, oatmeal, uh, rice, tortillas. Are you kidding me? My mom was like, what? Tortillas. We were eating chicken and fish. She looked at me dead in the eye. And she said, I will not live like this. Moderation, I can do. Not deprivation, not elimination. Doesn't work. I gave her the biggest hug. I said, wow, mommy. You know, I could get a little extreme sometimes, right? <laughs> She's like, yeah, no, 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 that's not going to work. I thanked her because I got that as a caregiver, you want to do the best that you can for your loved ones. And I understood that I just needed to listen, right? You just need to listen. <coughs> so, okay, great. Now let's recap. So now we know where our health is, right? Our family health history. We also know that knowing is not enough, right? You've got to be proactive. Take responsibility for your health. Transforming your health means making healthy happen. Now, once you start considering what's happening with our health, 
And where she starts managing her health, she took it up. She took on her life. Here I moved back to Chicago. She was with my dad uh, in Mexico. And she would travel about, let's say, an hour and a half once a month. And any of you that actually go to the doctor uh, because you have a, a, a certain illness and you need to maintain contact every month, you know that the importance not only lies upon you meeting with the doctor and there's work to be done as far as tests, you need the results to figure out where you're at, your progress. So sometimes it would take 10 days at a time. In one of those occasions, as my mother's traveling back, excited, happy that she's doing so well, share, ready to share that information with my dad that, you know, they're doing a good job. It was one August 14th in Monterrey, Mexico. It was in Canicula. It was hot, hot, extreme weather. And Unfortunately, my dad at the, at the time decided to leave the, the windows closed and the air off and no fans. He had just come from traveling maybe three or four blocks and back with the groceries. And he fell prey to a heat stroke, which led to a massive heart attack tragic and preventable. As you could imagine, for my mother to walk in thinking that she can share this joy with my father and he's gone. Tragic and preventable. Any of you have lost someone? Yes, right? Once, once tragedy happens and grief takes hold of your, your, your person, you're in and out of darkness, you know, and that's part of the grieving. For our family, his passing was like an earthquake, that it just shook our foundation. And in those moments of prayer and clarity, I shared with my family, I said, let's be a voice for health. Let's share with the world our story. So if you will, to the person right to the right of you, just take a moment and think of that one person that you'd like to honor? And what was that chronic illness that they battled or that they still do? So I'll leave you with just a moment for you to share. Great. Thank you. Thank you. How did that feel? Did that feel a little weird? Like my mom said, a little yucky? I don't know. Or did that feel good? You know, that felt like like you were honoring someone. I'm glad that you had that experience. Well, I had the opportunity. Four months after my father passed, I got an excellent opportunity to speak to the board of the 18th Street Development Corporation. It's a nonprofit organization that they're out to support fellow entrepreneurs in the area of the, in, in the Pilsen area and industrial corridor. And they embraced, they embraced Amateora, Voices for Health. We had our first health expo here at the National Museum of Mexican Fine Arts, thanks to Carlos Tortoledo. We were so excited, we've been excited that we can connect doctors, health advocates, caregivers, patients, aficionados, those on the fence, those curious, to share our experiences and support each other 
and also it, it provide services. My mother and I, we continued visiting other fairs, other expos, to figure out how we can collaborate with more people. In one of those occasions, we met with the American Heart Association. I spoke with one of the representatives from Women Heart. Women Heart is the national coalition for women with heart disease. I met a woman by the name of Alberta England. She shared with me, I'm a Women Heart champion. And she shared with me, to be a Women Heart champion, you need to have championed heart disease. Well, I shared with her our story, and she says, Leticia, do you know that 70% of Latina women have at least one risk factor for heart disease? We need someone like you to share your story. If selected, you will actually go out to Rochester, Minnesota at the prestigious Mayo Clinic and be amongst the top cardiologists. Technology, knowing what's going on with, with cardiovascular, cardiovascular health. There was one condition to see a cardiologist. In fact, I called Dr. Estela Hernandez. I was able to see a cardiologist that same day to make sure I got that done. I listened to the cardiologist as he was listening to my heart. And he says, Letitia, you've got not only a heart murmur, but you've got a valvular problem. How does that happen? What? After learning what's happening with my heart, he asked me, Letizia, how do you live? Do you feel, you know, a little tired, a little weak? I said, well, I'll tell you something. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what I've told the world. Thanks to my mom, eight years ago, I've lived in solidarity with living a transformed life as far as my health. Not only do we do the veggie shakes, now we offer Zumba to the community and we are making healthy happen. So I ask you, amate ahora, porque mañana puede ser muy tarde. Love yourself now. Tomorrow may be too late. I'm going to ask you to stand up. Stand up, stand up, and be a voice for health in your community. Thank you.